What is going on guys my name is Mehul and welcome to your second required JS tutorial in which we'll be looking at how to set up required JS for your project S now so far what we have learned in the first tutorial is just that what is required JS and you know that's pretty much it so in this tutorial and in the further tutorials we'll be really looking at how to make the best use of required JS for your projects and how it can come very handy when you have a lot of JavaScript files to handle and you're working on a big project as well so let's get started now to first of all what you need is you need to download this file required JS from their official websites and to do that just go to the required JS official page which is requiredjs.org and just click on this download link right here click on latest release and for me it says 2.1.22 and just download the minified version or with comments or whatever you like so that's it and then the next thing you have to do is to just add a script src require 2.1.22.js and another thing we need with required js is the data main attribute and what it does is it would accept the path as a string and it would basically load the configuration file of your required JS application which I'll be showing you in the next tutorial what that configuration file actually means so let's just go ahead and simply create a folder right here just let's say JS do that and yeah so yeah okay now what we can do is I can just click new file here just say this is config.js config.js good enough and then in the data main attribute just write js slash config now what happens is in required js most of the times you won't require to add a dot js to the file name because obviously it is designed to work with JavaScript files only so it already knows that this should be a file if it is not ending with a directory symbol so that's some common sense and that's how you just write the data main attribute and the next thing you have to do is to just initialize your required JS and to do that just write a simple script tag and inside this write require config function and all of your code here alright so what's happening here so what is happening is that first of all your page would kind of load this configuration file which is this file and once it's ready once it has been loaded in the browser all of this code would run here and what would go in this configuration file we'll be looking at in the next tutorial so that's all for this tutorial and if you liked it then don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching i'll see you then